In the last video, we talked about settings and making sure all your settings were good. This is number eight, the recipe. So under HighRail3D.net, under software and firmware, we're gonna click on recipes. And you can see here, we have recipes for Cura, for Prusa, for Simplify 3D, but we're gonna talk about the slicer or Slick3R recipes today. We're gonna download these recipes. Okay. I actually did them twice, so here it is. I'm gonna double click to open up the recipe archive. Now I'm gonna take another folder. The place where the recipes live is on your C drive under your user account. So I've got a folder open here to C colon users high rel app data roaming and I had a slicer recipe here but I just renamed it so we could go through the install I called it slicer.old so in this roaming directory here's your path where is where we're going to want to put the slicer folder so I'm just going to drag it to roaming and now we have the slicer recipe folder Inside here, there's a text document which explains uh, the nomenclature for the names of the files. So the example, this is the name of the file, of the, the recipe. That's what it means. The first number is the width of the nozzle. The second number is the thickness of the layer. The third number is the feed rate. And then after that is uh, infill density or patterns or other notes. Uh, there's an unheated recipe and a heated recipe. It's self-explanatory. Then if you're using a hot head and a hot pad or ambient temperatures. And then you have recipes based on the temperature of the extruder, the temperature of the bed, and what kind of cooling you want with the fan. The fan cooling setting is also the crosslink on demand setting if you have the UV array attached to your emulsion head. We have recipes for filament print and printer, and these correspond in your slicer in your Repetrol program to the print recipes, the printer recipes, and the extruder or filament recipes. They're not showing up now because we just installed them. So what I'm going to do is come over here to my Programs tab, and I'm going to I can either double click and navigate to the directory. Or I can just copy and paste it off the website like you saw me do last video. Since I did that that time, uh, this time I'm going to do it the navigation way. Users, high rail, app data. If you don't see your app data directory, it's because your default settings in your Windows Explorer is set to hide systems files and folders. If that's the case, you'll need to open up the folder browser go into uh, view, make sure file name extensions is shown and hidden items are shown. Hidden items is the important one for here. Okay, so then you'll see app data, roaming, and the slicer directory. Apply. Now, they still don't show up here, so we're gonna hit edit recipes. This will launch the slicer configuration tool. It takes just a minute to launch and resize the window. And it should detect these recipes that we just installed. There we go. So here are the recipes, the default recipes. element recipes, printer settings recipes. All right, when I close this window out, you can make any changes you want. There are good tool tips if you hover over any dialog box or any option, it'll tell you more information about that option. And if you make any changes, you should save, and I recommend using a new name so you know the difference between the old recipe and the new recipe. And when you click this close box up here, It'll repopulate these menus and now you'll be able to slice and print. If you're slicing outside of Repetrel, especially if you're using one of the other 
slicers, you may have to do some further configuration, but basically I recommend slicing it near the origin. Then we can use G-code, the G54, to move the model closer to the center. All right, that's it for the recipes. Our next session will be number nine, where we'll talk about the licensing.